Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video, we're going to discuss Hurricane Lenny in this day in weather history and why it obtained the nickname Wrong Way Lenny. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So Hurricane Lenny was part of the 1999 Atlantic hurricane season where we started off the season with, Hurric with uh, Arlene, and Lenny was actually the last storm to occur during the 1999 Atlantic hurricane season. And most notably, we have a couple of named storms in this season that were eventually would get retired. One of them uh, not only being Lenny itself, but down the line we had Harvey and also Katrina. So... This was a very interesting year to go over, but Lenny was very unique uh, in itself for the 1999 hurricane season because it gained the nickname Wrong Way Lenny, and we're going to explain why in this video. Now, Lenny uh, went through the Caribbean islands in November, and it wasn't the only storm to go through the Caribbean islands in 1999, but also we had Hurricane Jose come through the Caribbean and brought impacts to the Lesser Antilly Islands as well. Now Hurricane Lenny was a category 4 storm at its peak intensity and brought a very devastating impact to the Caribbean islands. Now why did it go the wrong way or at least the nickname and why it gained it? Well most hurricanes travel from east to west and Hurricane Lenny went from west to east. It started off in the Western Caribbean on November 13th as a tropical depression, and then slowly moved eastward across the Caribbean south of Jamaica and Hispaniola, and then eventually started turning towards the northeast before making landfall on November 18th uh, with St. Martin, where its eye went over the island, and then it slowly dissipated and eventually became a remnant low on November 23rd. But what caused it to go in the opposite direction normal hurricanes go? So typically, hurricanes go from east to west because they're traveling around the subtropical Azores Bermuda High, which is located in the middle of the Atlantic, typically. So we have the storms come off the coast of Africa. They follow the trade winds across the main development region. And then they get steered around our subtropical Bermuda High. Hurricane Larry did something completely opposite. It formed in the Western Caribbean. But instead of going around the Bermuda Azores High like it typically would, we had a strong upper level trough that was coming off the east coast of the United States. And because of this trough was digging down into the Caribbean, this pushed the storm from the west towards the east and moving it in the opposite direction that would normally occur for tropical systems in the Caribbean. Now, if we look at the microwave background of this storm, you can see how it rapidly intensified starting on November 16th, and then eventually uh, became a Category 4 storm on November 17th before making landfall with St. Martin on, on November 18th. And you can see here the progression. On the top left, it was on November 16th, where it was just starting to re-get itself organized and a better core. By the time we got to uh, 24 hours later, on the 17th, we had a full-fledged hurricane on our hands south of Puerto Rico. And then by the time we got to almost November 18th, we had a Category 4 storm knocking on the door of St. Martin. And here is a photograph of the storm at its peak intensity on November 17th, just before making landfall with St. Martin. You can see the very tight core the strong outer bands and outflow from a very well-defined upper-level ridge. 
This was a very powerful storm, had winds of 155 miles per hour when it made landfall in St. Martin. Now it also had a ton of rain with it and you can see the structure on the radar. Uh, this is from Puerto Rico showing the eye wall and the outer bands as they were impacting the islands as this storm moved through the Caribbean. Now, if we look at the uh, in total, we saw a ton of rainfall across Puerto Rico and the islands. Anywhere in those purple shades is indicating 10 plus inches of rain that fell on the islands in the Caribbean while this storm moved through. And you can see where it made landfall in St. Martin. It had up to 34 inches of rain from this storm. Now, rainfall wasn't the only impact. We also had the strong winds, which destroyed many homes in the area. But the, one of the bigger impacts from this storm was the storm surge. It was a Category 4, and because it was moving in the opposite direction, a lot of the structures weren't built to withstand it coming from the, uh, the west side of the island instead of the east side of the island. So we had a lot of storm surge making landfall on these islands and wreaking havoc across the coastal communities. So as I said, Wrong Way Lenny, Hurricane Lenny at its peak was a Category 4 storms with 155 mile per hour winds. It had a low pressure of a 933 millibar, making it the fourth strongest Atlantic hurricane on record in November. At the time, it was the strongest, but it's fallen behind uh, last year from hurricanes Iota and Ada that formed in 2020. And then there was also the 1932 uh, Cuba hurricane as well. Hurricane Lenny killed 17 people and caused $686 million in damage based on 1999 US dollars. And because of that upper level trough, it got the nickname Wrong Way Lenny. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.